Hey, Mark Prosser, we're here again in the shop. So last week we did some aluminum pulse welding on 316s aluminum. I figured it'd be interesting to up the thickness. Just remember, the thicker the material, the bigger the weld's gotta be. So today I'm gonna show you how to do a 2F horizontal position, fillet weld, pulsed aluminum MIG on 3 8 plate. And what that requires is several passes on the weld. So if you come down here and look at this example, my first pass went all the way through with that pulse MIG, just like on the 3 16 My second pass always goes on the bottom, and this is the same for any weld you're ever gonna do, MIG, stick, any of it. You work from the bottom up, just like building a house. You put the foundation in, we go to the roof. We don't build the roof and then jack it up and put the foundation in. So the second pass covers the first one about two thirds, and then the third one, fills right in exactly where it should go. And that is called a multi-pass pulsed aluminum MIG weld on some 3 8 inch thick. That's another problem that a lot of us have with thick aluminum is the thermal conductivity of aluminum is really bad, so it gets rid of heat fast. And you gotta have a pretty big TIG welder to weld 3 8 inch aluminum. Another advantage of MIG welding. So I'm gonna peel this first weld off and we're just gonna walk through this weld and I'll show you how to do it. I'm running a pulse MIG program. I'm using just a little bit of a whip and pause to get that weld to look like it does with the ripples. I'm gonna run the first one. I'll quench it, come back, run the second one, run the third one, take you all the way through it. You ready? So check out this first pass. Here's what we're looking for. And this is the hard thing about horizontal fillet welds is getting them placed in the joint correctly. They always end up on the bottom because that's how gravity's pulling it. We want the toes of the weld or the edges of the weld to be fused into the base metal and we want that weld sitting even in that joint. As we put another layer on, we have to make sure that this one doesn't get too far down on the bottom plate. Because if it's too far down, then the top one's gonna be too far down and your weld is not gonna be sitting flat in the bottom of that joint. So I'm gonna put one right here. I'm gonna run my wire from my MIG welder about right there and I'm gonna let that thing cover about two thirds of that first weld and make sure that it's washed into the bottom. It's washing out the toe of that weld and fusing into the bottom. Be right back. Okay, we got our second pass in. Come here and check it out. We're fusing good on the toe. And if you look real close, you can see about that much of that first layer. About that much of that first layer. Now my next one, I'm gonna lay in, I'm gonna angle a little more to the top piece, but I'm gonna lay it in right there. It's gonna fuse into the base metal here on the toe and into this weld bead. So we have this shelf here that we're gonna set our next weld in. And when that's done, it's gonna give us a flat weld positioned in the joint correctly, but also the correct weld size to have adequate strength for the thickness of material that we're using. Be right back. So we got the third one in. Again, whether you're MIG welding or whether you're stick welding or whether you're TIG welding, when you're doing horizontal weld joints, the whole idea is to keep that weld up in the joint so it's forming a triangle. Most of your horizontal welds fall to the bottom because of gravity and you're not compensating with angles. So if you come in and look at it, if we look at this thing just kind of like this, you can see it's sitting pretty doggone flat in the joint. There's the first one that's fused into the base metal. There's the second one that's fused into the base metal and halfway into the first one. And the last one is fused in to the second weld bead and the base metal. The toes are all washed in. And I would guess that's a pretty doggone competent weld if we cut that apart, see what kind of fusion we have to the root, it's gonna be nice. So again, big welding, aesthetic, beautiful welds, if you're good. If not, practice more. And if you don't wanna do that, think about a MIG welder. Cause you can sit down with a MIG welder, big MIG welders, small MIG welders. They make all different size spool guns and push pull guns. And you can do some pretty doggone good looking welds if you practice a little bit like always. So send me some comments. What kind of videos do you wanna see? I'll be back soon with some more. Thanks.